last few weeks have been unusual, to say the least. You know, usually when you want to hear from God, you'll spend time in prayer, you'll spend time in worship, and you got to work to kind of quiet your own soul, don't you? And so that you can hear Him. And the last few weeks, it's been different. The moment that my mind quiets down, whether I'm driving or doing a project here at the office or, or, or anything, the moment that my, my mind would quiet down, immediately God would jump in and begin teaching me. I have never had that happen like that. I have had him at times, you know, kind of download something quickly into my spirit. But it, it's like there's, there's something new going on. And, and I asked him, I said, Lord, you know, I, I always expect that during the Feast of, of Trumpets because the Feast of Trumpets between Trumpets and the Day of Atonement is, is an open door for the, the king is in the field that God begins to speak and heaven begins to speak. And, and God began to tell me that it has never been this way before, that there is, a, there is a coming together of certain things in the world for his purposes like this generation has never seen and that it's going to begin this trumpets and it's going to go all the way through 2013. And so he began to uh, begin teaching me about the new open heaven that is taking place. And I, I want to share some of that this morning. And I, I tell you what, it has been uh, kind of overwhelming because I've had to separate what he has been sharing for Mary and I what he's sharing for the, the body of Messiah, and what he's kind of sharing for some things that I'm doing with Restoration Fellowship International. And so I've been trying, okay, Lord, this goes in this box, this goes in this box, and this goes, because I, I don't want to share things for RFI that necessarily is not for the rest of the body and, and different things. And so I, I have really striven uh, to try to get it all separated because I want everyone prepared. There are things changing in America. Did you know that? There, are, there, there has been a shift I believe that some things with the election, some things that are going on in society were not what the enemy had planned. That darkness has become too emboldened, and because they got too bold too quick, the remnant has woke up and said, wait a minute, this is not what I signed up for in any area of my life. And because of that, God is jockeying some things, and, and he's going to begin doing some things. And the first thing that God told me, and God has a sense of humor, because I found out God can talk Arzok, Arz, Arz, I can't even say it this morning, Ozarkian this morning. I'm from here, but yet I can't say it, okay? Ozarkian. He said, people's chickens are going to get ready to come home to roost. I mean, that, that is an old country saying that the things that you set in motion that you thought you got away with that all these different things that one day them things are going to come home to roost on you and we're getting ready to come into a season that those things are going to begin happening here's some things that God told me and this is essential what people have set their hearts toward will be accelerated it's not going to be inch by inch it's going to be mile by mile it is an unprecedented time to uh, reaping, to, as, as, as unprecedented time to reap what you have sown. Now, why, why is this so important? Number one, individuals that have been trying to seek God are going to be rewarded. Because there's been a lot of believers that you're, you're trying to seek him for stuff, but yet there's stuff of the enemy holding you back. Anybody ever been there? You're seeking God, to, but there's bondages there. There's things that you need to break through and that we have been frustrated because we know that we need to be able to, we, we should be going through something. We should be getting some victory. And we have been frustrated. God said in the days that are coming, everything uh, will begin breaking off of our lives that the enemy has placed there to hold us back. Our personal harvest in the kingdom will be greatly multiplied by the hand of God and return to us. So all that time that you've been seeking, it seems like nothing's happening. You've been seeking and nothing's happening. You've been, God says, you know what? I'm going to take all of that. I'm going to put it in one big ball. I'm going to multiply it, and then I'm going to hand it back to you. Now those chickens, I do not mind if they come home to roost. Because it is the goose that laid the golden egg is what's getting ready to come. For those that have been seeking God. 
But there are also, and in the weeks and the months to come, you're going to see this uh, divergence happen in, not only in the church, but in America as a whole. There are individuals that have set their hearts to create their own version of God that their flesh can handle. We, I mean, here, here's one of the things God told me, because uh, we know we've been dealing with a lot of things, a lot of individuals all across the nation and just in all these different situations, and people in bondage will tend at times to try to put pressure on you to get you to do what they can't at times. And sometimes we struggle with that. All of us do. Anybody in ministry does. You know, I think there's a reason why sometimes uh, pastors go bald and it necessarily is not male pattern baldness. is because at night as they pray, they pull their hair out sometimes. Uh, I, I do feel for pastors. And God said that the number one thing that they need to hear for healing is the word No. No. I'm not going to do what you're telling me to do. I'm going to stick with what God's telling me to do. And he said also, he said, a lot of the movements in the church have been because God said no, and they got enough people together in the flesh to make a yes. I don't care what God says. I like it this way. I'm going to do it this way. This, this is more pleasing to my flesh. This, is more, this more tickles my fancy than what God says to do. And God says that they are going to go full steam into their own deception, that God's going to throw fuel on their fire. It, it, it's, and one of the things he reminded me of, you know, the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Did you know that God didn't originally harden his heart, that Pharaoh kind of did that on his own? And God, in his foreknowledge, knew the direction they were going to go, so he just pulled out the stops and said, you want to be hardened? Be hardened. And what, what's, what's getting ready to come is God saying, you seeking me, you're going to get rewarded. You're trying to create your own path, I'm throwing fire on it. If you want a darkness, you're going to be so dark that you're going to be like a black hole, is what's coming. God said in these people that have created their own self-deception, he's going to pour out a delusion on them. And it says that many will include signs and wonders that confirm their carnally developed theologies. They may have impressive sounding visions, but the visions, visitations, and experiences will not hold up to biblical examination. I am tired of hearing about people having visitations from angels, and it sounds more like the Keebler elves showed up. Any time in the Bible an angel showed up, there was reverence toward God. There was humility. Most of the time they hit their face in the dirt. You don't find any account with angels spinning, jumping, and doing backflips. You know, if they were ever going to do that, it was probably when Gabriel showed up to Mary and said, you're going to conceive. You know, it's like, whoa. <laughs> he didn't do that. There, there, is, there is a reverence to angels because they come from the presence of God. And some of the squirrely stuff, this one, uh, this one guy, I'm not going to mention his name. Good thing because I forgot it. <laughs> that makes it real easy, that dude. Um, had one angel that was coming commuting to him, and his name was Chuckles. How many know there is not an angel from heaven called Chuckles? No more than Bobo the Clown. <laughs> but yet... They're getting a following saying, well, there are these visitations, these angels are coming. And, and they're, whoop, I don't care. You know, the Bible says angel, that Lucifer himself can come as an angel of light. You better go back to the word. God says, you want to be deceived? I'm getting ready to pull out all the stuff because that is where your heart has taken you. And therefore, your chickens are coming home to roost. The third group. Individuals that have rejected God and embraced darkness will plunge into darkness at an accelerated rate. The evil that is in their heart will become so powerful that there will be no way of hiding it. How many have seen on some of the political things that have been going on that it is such a blatant lie that it, it is almost incomprehensible? It is going to get worse. It is going to be so bad that even people that were once on their side can no longer stomach the lies that are being put forth. Everything of darkness is going to get darker and darker and darker. In fact, one party uh, that is having their convention, I'm not going to name names, although there's only one left to have, but... Um, 
uh, they're starting off their assembly with two hours of prayer. Doesn't that sound wonderful? By two imams that are Muslim. One of them believes and is committed to the doing away of the U.S. Constitution and for it to be replaced with Sharia law in America. That's who's opening up their convention in two hours of prayer. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather have a Holy Ghost-filled man come up there and pray? I tell you what, their little heads would explode because it is so opposite, and it's getting ready to just go like this. Guys, it needs to be. For too long, the world has sounded good while the church sounded crazy. Come on. You're having all these people going around having all these visions, doing all these things, and doing some of the most squirreliest things you ever heard of, and then we say, you know, come to Jesus and come be a part of this crazy mess. No, thank you. How about being part of a real kingdom that really walks with God? When you get around God, you don't get more crazy. You get sound. Come on. You get sound mind. You begin doing the right thing, not out of what you're going to get out of it. There's also going to be a transition for those walking with God. One of, the, one of my pet peeves is people walking with God, but they're always looking for somebody to use. How many know that if you're walking with God, you're looking for somewhere to serve? There is a big difference. See, all this stuff, God, all this stuff has been so mingled up in the body that Jesus is not being shown to the earth. And so what God's getting ready to do is say, you know what, this belongs over here, this belongs over here, and this belongs over here. And there's got to be no more gray areas. Those who have a heart toward light are going to become lighter. Those that have a heart for darkness are going to be made darker. Those that have a heart to be squirrely, I'm really going to pour on the squirrel on them so that the world can look and say, this is light, this is squirrely, and this is darkness. They have got to have a clear choice. You see, I think that is what is going to precipitate the last great revival of the earth. They have got to have a clear choice. It's not the best life now. It's not feel good and, and fuzzy puppies. It's either you walk with God and you discipline yourself by the, by, the, by the cross and by the commandments of God or you go off into some esoteric thing that the new age, that mean, uh, there's some things right now in the body of Christ that are getting ready to happen that are going to make new agers go back and say, I wouldn't buy that. <laughs> you know, it's going to get so squirrely new agers that are sitting there kissing crystals and everything are going to say, you're crazy. And then the darkness in the hearts of men are going to become so evident that there's going to be no hiding it. Here's the second thing God told me. There will be greater and swifter consequences for our decisions. Greater and swifter consequences. That we're going to need to stop and consider our decisions and our actions during this time. The consequences of our actions will be multiplied and manifested more rapidly. In other words, the junk you used to get away with, you're not going to get away with anymore. The good news is if I'm making the right choices, if I make the right decision, it will quickly be multiplied and I'll get the harvest for it. I'm not talking about, well, if you do the right thing now, six years from now, God will give you a blessing. I'm talking about it'll probably manifest that afternoon. But if you do something stupid, it's going to also manifest that afternoon. That's why we would, I mean, just to take a second and stop and think through something. You know, if we would do that instead of just going with the flesh, how much better things would be? 90% of what I've heard people over the years tell me that the Holy Spirit told them to do, the Holy Spirit was also another name for their flesh. They just get a feeling. I got this carnal feeling, whoa, this carnal feeling. And then they flow with it, and then God doesn't do it. And they go, huh. Anybody ever see a believer do that? Stop and pray, and God's going to give you the way. Is this my flesh? Is this my spirit? How does this line up with the Word of God? In fact, it's, it's going to be so rapid, guys. And this is good news because there's so many of us that have been doing the right things for years and never seen any fruit. You did it by faith. 
You know, and, and some of us have, have come to the conclusion, well, just doing the right thing is the reward in itself that you know you've done the right thing. And we've, we've had to kind of tell ourselves that because we've never seen the harvest. What we didn't realize was the harvest was being delayed so that God could group it all together and release it at one time. There's going to be a change. Maturation will come so quickly that it will almost manifest before the seed is sown. It's a, God told me that this is a partial fulfillment of the promise found in Amos 9.13. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman will overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, he that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Now, this is only a partial fulfillment. How many know that sometimes when you see prophetic fulfillment in the word, you'll see a partial fulfillment before the full fulfillment comes, just like before Jesus went to the cross, and he began Again, healing people, Matthew said it was as I, this is a partial fulfillment of Isaiah that he began to bear their, their pains and carry their iniquities. He was doing it before he went to the cross because you're getting so close, there's kind of a bleed over. We're getting ready to bleed over some things of the millennial reign. We're getting ready to have some bleed over of the judgment of God on some things. I don't know about you, but that just makes me excited. Guys, this will need to manifest. Not only in the, and guys, this is going to manifest in all three groups. Those that are seeking God, they're going to get a quick harvest. Those that are they're wanting to deceive themselves, they're going to get more deceived. Those that are sowing darkness, they're going to get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. It's got to be this way. The earth has got to have a clear delineation of the real Jesus, the real gospel, the real word, and everything else. This is one of the reasons why in a lot of churches there are those that have been faithful that have asked, why, why isn't the church growing? You want to know the real reason? God doesn't want to bring new babies into the, into the mess. God is tired of people being preached the cross and then when they get saved they're being taught not to keep the commandments. They're taught political jockeying. They're, they're taught everything but how to walk with God. We also need to weigh everything that we do. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 says, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. You know, there, there's, there's a wide variety of things that we can kind of get away with and do. But let me tell you something. If there's a repercussion for it, quit it. It doesn't matter if you have the liberty in Christ to do it or not. Quit doing it. That's simple, isn't it? In other words, as we approach this day, we're going to learn that a finer line is a place of power. Walking a finer line with God is a place of victory. That there are going to be benefits for walking the line with God. And, we're, and our desire is not to going to be wandering. If it doesn't bring benefit, if it doesn't edify, I don't need to be a part of it, even though it's lawful for me to do. It's going to be important. Number three, what you feed will grow and what you starve will die out. See, Mike, what are you talking about? How many of us have had bondages and that we, we've tried to quit them for a time and to try to starve them out, but yet they seem to have resurrection power? I, I mean, there are some things I have crucified so many times and that thing ends up pulling itself off the cross and ends up being a walking zombie in my life. And what God is saying is, you know what? You're getting to the end of time. What you put your effort into in your life is going to multiply rapidly. So if you feed yourself the word and you pray and you fast the way you're supposed to, you're going to have dynamic results in this new window. What you choose to starve to death, what you choose to say, I'm not going to do that anymore, I choose to crucify that, God says when you nail it to the cross, I'll put my hand over it and won't let it off until it's dead. You see, there are some demon spirits and there are some principalities. Their chickens are coming home to roost too. There are some bondages. Their chickens are coming home to roost. And this is going to be, I'm going to, transdimensional. 
See, what do you mean by that? How many know that there are a lot of things going on on the earth today from somebody just in simple bondage that you had Masonic ancestry and you've been trying to overcome it? That's getting ready to be taken care of. But God's also going to take care of it on another level. There have been those who, that have been used mind control and a lot of different things that are MPD. And God is saying, if your heart is to seek me, I'm getting ready to unscramble the eggs. But you know what's going to be really crazy about this? You're going to have some that, that were MPD that you think they weren't really serving God and didn't really want to serve God, that that was their heart's cry. All this other junk's going to break off of them, and they're going to serve God probably and, and, put, you to, <laughs> and put you to envy. And some of the ones that were MPD that lacked like they were serving God, and, and they're, going to, they're going to end up being called the son of the devil by the time it's true because what was really in their heart, every, all the facades and all the bondage are going to be broke, and it's a matter of the heart. Where the heart is, God is getting ready to magnify and clear out any deception, any bondage, anything except that which is in the heart. We're going to see politicians do that, that they're going to start saying what they really believe. I think that's kind of been going on already, don't you? And then they've got to put the spin on it. No, that didn't really, really mean Yeah, it was. You're getting bold enough. You're actually saying what you believe. God says prayer in our spiritual walk will be able to soar to new heights if we put some effort into it. Now is the time to put some effort into it. Don't allow the devil to tell you not to. Put some effort into it, and you're going to get a reward when you put effort into it. At the same time, if I will begin crucifying bondages, they will wither away to nothing. Number four, prayer will take on a new power. How many feel like sometimes all you do is pray to the air? You pray and you pray and you pray, nothing happens. Those that seek God, prayer will take on a new power. His presence will become more real, and answers to prayer will come more quickly. It'll almost be like the sowing and reaping. You'll start getting the answer before you start praying. That, that, that's the season that we're going to come into. How far past 2013 it goes, I don't know. I know that if we do this right, we're going to position ourselves for the great harvest that's going to come. This is a time of strategic positioning. Number five, this new revival will be a personal revival before it is a corporate revival. When God told me that, I said, okay, explain that just a little bit. Because the kind of revivals that we have in America, you get a few that get some Holy Ghost goosebumps or some kind of manifestation, and it, it's almost like my chickens, that if you take a thing, you get, take a handful of feed, they can be anywhere in the yard, and wherever you throw that spot of feed, they all go, if you ever If you ever want to get swarmed by, by, a, by a whole hen house full of chickens, go out there with a handful of feed. That's the way most of the body of Christ acts. It's like you're getting touched by God, and I want a little drop. Where we're headed is going to be like Abraham. It's individual. That's one of the reasons why we are called the sons and daughters of Abraham. It's going to be individual. While the whole earth is walking into toward Babylon, we're going to go the other way. And what God is going to do, God is going to do in the heart of the individual. As I seek God, God, God is going to break me free of everything that has held me back. I'm going to move forward, and it's going to be individuals in, in all three of these areas. They're, they're all going to be experiencing the same thing, that I, if, if I'm walking with God, God is doing something real and powerful in my life, and I'm going to begin moving more and more toward that. Those that are into deception, they're going to get more into deception. Those that get into darkness are going to get more into darkness. And then something very unusual is going to happen. You're going to start gravitating toward what you are. Darkness will, not, will be repulsed by those walking in light. They won't go there. The squirrel will not invade the church at First Baptist Church anymore. 
they are going to begin congregating and pulling in by, by that which God is. They, they will sense kindred spirit. It will not be, well, I want to run out over there out under the spout where the glory comes out. It's the glory has come here, and those that the glory is beginning to touch, we're going to attract one another, and we'll be repulsed by anything else. I'm, that's really the way it should be. Ones of kindred hearts. By the end of 2013, the greatest divisions that ever existed in the church and in society will be manifested. It's almost like Jesus said, don't come to think I bring peace, I come to bring a sword, in that there's going to be all this division. There's going to be no gray areas. That those that are really serving God, they're going to separate themselves from anything that isn't walking with God. Those that are squirrely, they can't stand the darkness, but they can't stand anybody really walking with God either. All the squirrels will gravitate with all the nuts. And they'll say, this is, this is church, and they'll get worse and worse and worse and worse. And they'll, they'll start getting on television, and the minute they open their mouth, they're going to say, you know what? I know exactly what you are. Because, see, part of the problem that I have had and we, we've talked about the double stream. You know, so, and so a prophet going and they begin talking about exactly what God is saying. Then they go Phoop! off on some tangent or something. Talking holiness and then talking about chuckles the angel. That's going to stop. Because the people that have the double stream are going to have a choice. Either they follow the weird or they follow God. And when they follow God, they're going to disregard all this. Although if they follow the weird, they're going to disregard God. Because God is tired of people that are hungry to know him, and they end up with a guy that's following Chuckles the angel. They're tired of it. God is tired of it. And heaven is saying, I have positioned everything so that people can clearly know. Let me tell, and, and I'm expecting by the end of 2013, I don't care if you're Messianic, if you're Charismatic, if you're Baptist, you're all going to be saying the same thing. We're all going to start looking more like one another. And I'm not talking about everybody running around with Zitzi or, or shofars. I'm talking about the way that they live. It's not that they're adapting to a culture. They're adapting to a kingdom. And you're going to have to start Baptist saying, you know what? I'm keeping the commandments. I'm rejecting everything else. It's the cross. Do you ever notice... There's something else God brought up to me in, in the book of Revelation. It said that there, there's two songs that we're going to sing. The song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. I did not see in that the song of the Talmud or the song of the charismatic prophets. Didn't see that. Moses and Jesus. The commandments and the cross. And even within the Messianic movement, um, Brother Luper and I were sitting and, and talking, and he almost said it with tears in some areas where the, uh, some of the Messianic movement is going that you don't hear about the blood of Jesus anymore. He, he went down, and they, they have a lot of missions in Mexico, and they were alarmed. Now, you know, the Catholic Church has done a lot of damage down there. It really has. And anybody in Mexico, any evangelical in Mexico will tell you that because of the way that the Catholic Church preaches, there are no morals. Guys, when I was down there preaching, I made, one, I made a statement about fidelity in marriage and, and you know, not committing adultery, these type of things. And the ones that went the, <gasps> the most were the pastors. Because there has been such a decay morally in Mexico that evangelical pastors will have a wife and then a couple of women on the side. And that was new data to them, and it was freaking them out because the anointing was there to confirm the word. And so because of that, there is almost an aversion to the cross in Christian churches in Mexico. And John kind of went off last time he was down there. He said, you know what? I want to see the menorah. I want to see the talit, but I also want to see the cross. And it's empty, by the way, just like the tomb. 
Because things have just, God is getting ready to pull it back. God's getting ready to pull it back, guys, in unprecedented ways. Now, this is a strategic move of God. Because there, there are actually four kinds of people, and I've already been dealing with three, four kinds of people. The one, those that are seeking God are going to find what you're seeking. Those that were seeking deception, they're going to find what they were seeking. Those that were seeking darkness are going to find what they, are to, what they were seeking so that the harvest can come in. Because how many know there's a lot of people out in the world right now that don't know to seek God, they don't know to seek squirreliness, and they don't know to seek darkness? It's that last great harvest of people that are hurting saying, I want somebody to give me some real answers. I want somebody that has the real thing. I want somebody that is really walking. If there is a God, I want to know that he's real, and I want to know that there's a sign. I want to be able to walk with him without acting crazy. I want to walk with God, and not, my neighbors don't think that I need Thorazine to settle me down. They're crying out for that, and as God begins to do this thing, they're going to they're gonna be able to clearly see the world is going to see. This is God, this is squirrely, and this is darkness. The delineation is going to become so clear that little children are going to be able to tell the difference. There are going to be people come on TV and the moment they open their mouths, I don't care if it's a religious program or a news broadcast, you're going to know exactly what camp they are in. You know, I just recently with the things that were going down in Florida, I heard politicians get up and break every rule that we have this because of Almighty God, the God of the Bible, and that we are going to walk with Him. Did you know that's a political no-no? Supposedly. They always worry about, you know, us in 501c3s violating separation of church and state. And now I see this chase jumping up and saying, we want some church. <laughs> How many know that's good? And you, could, and you could tell the ones that were faking it and the ones that were really saying it from their heart. Yes. You could tell. Just like on the other side. My favorite word is the word. <laughs> you would know the word if it hits you upside the head. And it's becoming apparent. It becomes apparent. Just like guys, that, and some of us have already experienced that somebody that tells us they're walking with God, and the first time they start talking about their life or start talking about what they believe from the Word, you know they don't know God. That is going to accentuate. It's got to for the church's sake, it's got to for the world's sake. It's got to happen. Because uh, b before, I'm going to end with this. Before the Antichrist comes, and how many know he's already kind of waiting in the wings? You're going to have to have a clear choice between the Antichrist and the real Christ. You've got to have a real choice. And if you don't have the real choice, you're in trouble. But the thing is, God in his grace is going to make sure that everyone has a real choice. That what's really of God is going to be so, so clear that even the ultra-liberal news media will have to say, this is God, but we don't like it. Because the choice is, there, there, I mean, in, in tribulation prayer, there's going to be those that are going to die for their faith. You can't do that without a clear choice. You also can't have a clear choice of being able to stand up against the flood and stand up against what's coming and hold your ground and be victorious if you don't know where the kingdom is.
So, Mike, does this mean that good's going to happen next year, that bad's going to happen next year? Yes. Bad's going to happen to the dark, good's going to happen to the good, and we're going to find out quickly where everybody really is. By the end of 2013, let me tell you something, there'll be no question. Do you walk with the Lord? There'll some say, no, why? You know, okay, I got my answer. <laughs> it's, it's going to be that separated. Thank God. Thank God. It's got to be. It's got to be. There are some changes coming. Let me tell you something. This message today took me out of my comfort zone. All you know I like to take apart, I like to exegete Scripture because that's safe. <laughs> it it kind of rattles me when God says, no, this morning you're supposed to preach a prophetic word and this is what's getting ready to come. And I'm thinking, yeah, Lord, but now if we get to the end of 2013, it's just like it is right now. Who are they going to come after? But I have found over the years, every time that I have yielded to God, because I, I, I already have the next six, seven weeks planned on what I was wanting to teach, and God told me to set it aside until after the feast. No, you give this. Okay. But God already had it all typed out. I was ready for Mary to proofread it. It's going to work perfect in the video series I'm wanting to do. That's a, huh? Well, that's right. <laughs> He says, you'll get to do it eventually. <laughs> because we need to know where we are. I want you to start making the right decisions. When the flesh raises up, I want you to have the wisdom to tell it no. Because there's going to be greater consequences. You see, there's some of you that have been seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What you don't know, what's getting ready to happen is the Holy Ghost is going to start seeking you. I see your heart. I'm going to come in like a tidal wave, and you're going to go blub, blub, glug, glug underneath the flow. That's right. You're going to find yourselves in the middle of Walmart preaching because somebody opened the door to a question, and the wisdom of God's going to start falling out of your mouth faster than you can comprehend it. And it's going to speak right to where they are. And it's, I'm, I'm going to say this. You know, the traditional way is you know a sinner, you invite them into church and say, Holy Ghost, sick them, you know, and then hope that they get saved. You're going to start leading people to the Lord in the workplace. Not in some religious way, not in, not in some big fancy show, but you're going to start sharing wisdom with them, and they're going to give their hearts to God, and you're going to start bringing them in. Jim, you need to come on in because you need to have a place where you can learn the Word. That's right. That's right. It's going to transition. It's going to be more like the book of Acts. Because even the way that we do in the charismatic movement, you know, brother so-and-so has a gift of healing. He blows into town. Everybody gets healed. And so we've got to raise all this money to get him to blow in so all the sickness can blow out. No. God wants to have his healing flow through you. That in parking lots, God's going to use you because you have positioned yourself and you've done what you need to do. And he says, you know what? Because the bondages are broken and I can flow, I'm going to use you. And you're going to start bringing reports of people that got healed during the week as you prayed for them. I'm believing we're going to have some sessions that I'm not even going to get to teach because everybody is going to increase everybody else's faith by sharing what God did that week through them. Not as a matter of pride, but as a matter of giving honor to God. I can't wait. You see, if they have a body ministry, the body's got to be able to minister. God's got to be able to flow. And the fivefold ministry is going to begin functioning the way that it was supposed to. Where the fivefold ministry is supposed to be your coaches. And we've made the fivefold ministry the quarterback. We've made them the, the front linemen. We, we, we've made them the fullback. When they're supposed to be one giving you the game plan. 
and say, here's how you pray for the sick. Here's how you do this. Here's how you're led by the Holy Spirit. Now go win the game for Jesus. No more celebrities in the kingdom. No more celebrities in the kingdom. No one believer is going to have star status anymore because it ends up being idolatry, and the moment it ends up being idolatry, the only thing God can do is knock them off their pedestal. It's we're all a part of the body, and we're all functioning together, and as each one of us flow, it enables the kingdom to flow. That's why God's going to do all the separation, because he's tired of his anointing being tainted. He's tired of his presence being tainted, and so he's going to separate things out. That's why some of us have felt like we've been on a holding pattern for years. And we know it. And, and, and part of it, is, it's like you have this seeking, and you, 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 everywhere you go, you feel like you're a round peg trying to fit in a square hole. And so we try to fill it in with other things. That's getting ready to stop because cause the problem was, God, you know, God's board, all the, all the pegs have the same shape. The problem was that God's board wasn't on the field. And God's getting ready to line things back out for all of our sakes. I don't know about you, but that's exciting to me. And it's going to start on the Feast of Trumpets, and it's going it's to start slow. It's going to go through atonement. It's going to go through tabernacles. And after tabernacles, God's just going to start taking the knob and turning it up. So where you end up at the end of 2013 will be based upon your heart. It's going to be based upon your heart. And there's a lot of miracles that we've been believing God for. At the end of 2013, they're going to be here on a lot of different levels. On a lot of different levels. Some are wanting to have families. You're going to have families. Some are wanting to go, God, where is my, where is my, where does this peg that you made me, where does it fit? And when, when, you, when God get, is getting ready to open it, it's going to be so comfortable and so perfect that you say, I don't need to look any further. I know exactly, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to be, and it is good, and I ain't leaving. <laughs> I ain't leaving. And I'm not talking about a church home. Now, be really specific. everybody's just going to come to biblical life, and they're just going to, oh, we're going to be over. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your life. Your life, you're going to find the place, the perfect place that God wants you, that you can flourish, and that you can use all your gifts. And yes, part of it is going to include the church that God plants you at, but it's going to be your whole life is going to fall in line with this. You're going to be church looking for some place to happen. I don't know about that. I, I like that. I don't have to wait to next Sabbath before I can feel the presence of God or be used by God or, 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 or any of these things. It's going to be day in and day out. I walk with God. God walks with me. And I'm free. And I'm whole. And I know his voice. And his anointing's flowing. And that God loved me so much, he brought me to this time in life that everything that the devil put on me to hold me back is going to crumble off. And now God is going to begin to flow through those very areas to set others free. I have never felt such an urgency from heaven and such a, a, a power from heaven that this, this, this is not something I'm saying, well, in four or five years, brother. No. How many know we're just a couple weeks away from trumpets? The closer we get, what I feel heaven is saying is lock and load. That, those of you who don't know what military is, that means you're ready to get into the action. Right before you land to take some ground, they say lock and load and shoot at will. Now Mary's already having, already having visions of Terminator 2 where Sarah Connor has that shotgun. Choo -choo. Or what was that, the rundown that The Rock takes two shotguns and goes, choo choo. Yeah. She, she said, I'm ready. She's ready for target practice. Devil. We've been waiting for this. Biblical life has been on a holding pattern for a while. Now, there's, I mean, there's some great things that God has been doing, and, and God has been doing some great things nationally and even internationally. 
and God has been using it. But there are certain things that, are, that have been on a holding pattern, and God's saying, you know what? It's time to come in for a landing. It's time to come in for a landing. And you guys who feel like you've been on a holding pattern, it's time to come in for a landing. God's got you covered. I can't wait. I really can't wait. And it's not about us growing and getting another building. I can't wait to see what God's going to use you for. I can't wait for you to move from frustration to happiness. From bondage to freedom, from, from feeling like you're, you're God's stepchild that he never talks to, that, you have, that God begins talking to you. That you move from depression to joy. Guys, there have been times in my own life, all I had to do was to get depressed was to look at my life. Really? You know, it's like, you know, God's blessing is there, but once I get out of the four walls of my house, it all turns to doo-doo to doo-doo, you know. And so all I got to do is look at it. God said, no, no, no more. We're going to move to a time that's exciting to get up in the morning. Yeah. It's going to be exciting to go to work. You're going to learn how to pray and watch God bring things that work under control where it's no longer a death pit full of strife. I mean, Mike has found this out and others have found that out. If you know what, what God can do if you pray on your way to work. Take authority in that place, especially if you've been given any authority. Take it and bring the kingdom of God in. People will quit fighting with one another, and it will move from a toxic environment to a manageable. You, you may not have church at work, but it becomes manageable where you don't feel like you've got to take a shower spiritually, emotionally, and physically after you leave. And people are going to start saying, you know, something changes when they get, when they get to work. Something changes about the atmosphere my hurt and my anger and my wounds settled down when they were around. What's, what's going on? And you can say, behold, the kingdom of God has come near you. Let me introduce you to the king of the kingdom. I'm excited. I, cannot, I can't give an altar call for this because it's not an altar call. It's a declaration. Your chickens are coming home to roost. Rock! <laughs> It's okay, I got a lot of chickens of the kingdom and I've learned to kill the other ones. To repent and to pray. Because it's a matter, what's in the heart is going to manifest. What's in the heart is going to manifest all over this land, all over the world. Darkness, that's why the prophet said that, that darkness is going to cover the face of the earth, gross darkness like never before, but thy light has come. There's going to be this contrast coming. God said, expect it. Expect it. Seek him. Seek him early. You're going to move from a drudgery to pray to a joy to pray. You're going to get hell, oh, and before you get to the O, oh, God says, hi. What you, what's going on? Oh, my kid doesn't do that. Yes, he does, and he has a sense of humor. God, heaven wants to teach you and to give you what you need so, so badly. And I think one of the things why God is doing it the way he is, there's so few voices he can use. He says, I'm just going to step in and do it myself to those who have a heart to hear. This is one of the greatest times. It can be one of the most terrifying times, one of the most exhilarating times of church history. And we're all getting ready to step into it. I can't wait. I can't wait. Father, I just thank you for this word this morning. Father, this is not my word. It's your word. Father, I have great anticipation. I gave it this morning with fear and trembling because I didn't want to add to or take away from anything that you've shown me. But, Father, I know the world needs this. The church needs this. There are sinners out there that need to see the true body but all, out all the things the enemy has done to, to transform it into something that it is not. Father, our heart longs for the light to become lighter, the dark to become darker, and everything to become self-evident. 
Lord, we just pray, let it be so, Lord Jesus. Let it be so in our lives, and we will seek you. We give our hearts to you this morning, and Father, we say that every day, have your way. As Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done in this earth, just as it is in heaven, Father. Father, we thank you, and we praise you for it this morning. In Jesus' name.